This week on the RV Podcast, what happens when you combine a tiny home and an RV? We're going to give you a tour of one. Famous football coach Jim Harbaugh wants to drive his RV out to Los Angeles, camp in it a few months, so he can be as close to his new team as possible as the new head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers. And why the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta has become a must-see for everybody out there. All this and much more, including the news of the week and your RV lifestyle questions, coming up in episode 483 of the RV Podcast. everybody, I'm Mike Wendland and this is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, Jennifer, and it's good to be with you guys in another episode of the podcast. Yeah, and here we are at our little retreat in La Bali Ridge in by Linden, Tennessee, and uh, I wish you could say it was a beautiful day, but it is a beautiful day if you like rain. It's got a little mm -hmm. rain coming down. Well, we have used this day as an editing day, so it's kind of nice to be in our cozy little RV. It is a little cooler than it has been. Hey, before we get going, we want to tell you that this uh, podcast is available in many different forms. Uh, first of all, it's available in video form on our RV Lifestyle YouTube channel. And we will uh, provide a link for you in the description below. Also, if you are just listening to us on the audio version, of course, the RV podcast been around for 483 episodes now. And uh, it is available on all of your favorite podcast apps. So... Uh, like Jen says, we're uh, at Loblolly Ridge. That's what we call our little five-acre paradise here in the uh, mid part of Tennessee. And uh, we came in over the weekend. And uh, a good time was had. We've been really busy since we arrived here, having fun, looking at the property, just seeing what needs to be done. Yeah, we um, are on, uh, the RV is sitting, I'd take you outside, but it's pouring rain, so I can't really show you that very well. Maybe I can show you a picture, but the RV is sitting on a brand new concrete pad that we had installed uh, over the last uh, few weeks. And might I say that was the best investment that we've made, especially with this rain right now, that we are on a nice pad. Yeah. And it, we're not tracking mud and everything in. We don't have to put the the, th the rug down, the mat, to get in and out. I, I like I like it already. I like it. Yeah. it's uh, We made it a little oversized. It's 40 feet long by 20 feet wide. And that 20 foot, five foot wide part is great because we hug one end and then we have plenty of room for like a little cement patio outside mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's uh, it's great we probably will put the rug out when we stay for longer and it's not the weather isn't kind of iffy as it is now we spent a couple weeks in florida um the tampa rv show and then we went to our condo on the emerald coast and the weather there was pretty miserable up until the last few days the last few days that we were there it was it was great but um, it was temperatures been abnormally warm uh, in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Even here in Tennessee, when we got in on Saturday, it was 72, I think. Now, Sunday turned to be a bit of a, the rainy day, but uh, that's all right. Rainy days are good. In an RV, you just listen to the rain fall on the roof and get some work done. I love hearing the sound of rain pitter-patter on, yeah. on the roof. Yep, Very is. relaxing. So, um, a couple of things I want to talk to you about. First of all, I uh, want to give a shout out to this new RV property that we've been telling you about out in Arizona. Because you know, there's only a handful of places where you can enjoy temperatures in the 70s during the harshest months of winter. And one of those is Arizona. Um, but most places that you try and get into in an RV, you'll find they're very expensive, they're crowded. Uh, public parks, uh, almost impossible to get into. Well, there are new RV ownership properties outside of Phoenix. The development is known as Saguaro Acres, and the prices start at $39,900. Uh, great owner financing available. Uh, these are two to five acre sites. And the best part is they all have access to beautiful uh, Alamo Lake and the Arizona Peace Trail, which is this great ATV trail that people from all over the world come to. This is ownership. You own this land, so you don't need any reservations to go stay. There's no time limits how long you can stay, no crowded parks. You share it, rent it, whatever you want, because it's your land. 
Now, I can tell you that Jennifer and I have owned a land now for over two years uh, here in uh, in Tennessee, where we're coming to you from today. And this is a big trend among our viewers, buying your own land. And uh, a lot of people fed up, not being able to get reservations. And uh, we can come here in our land anytime we want, as often as we want, for as long as we want. So this new development in Arizona is worth you guys checking out if you're out west and you're thinking about some, some cool property. Just go to BigAZLand.com. All one word, BigAZLand.com. The one thing that can ruin a perfect RV trip is a bad mattress. And believe us, we know. Over the years, we've tried many and we have found them all wanting until now. Now, we sleep on the RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. Quite simply... It's the best we've ever slept on. We chose a queen-size Aurora Lux medium firm mattress that arrived tightly rolled in a box. All we did was put it on the bed, unroll it, and wait for it to recover from the compression. Then we put on the sheets and the bed covers and found we slept so well that we ordered another one for our home. That's how comfortable it is. Our sleep is now so luxurious and deep that we can't imagine using a different mattress. Shipping is free. If you're disappointed with the current mattress in your RV, you owe it to yourselves to try the RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. Brooklyn Bedding sends out all of their RV mattresses from their own factory in Arizona. This means they're able to use premium materials at a reasonable price for you with no middleman bringing up the cost. Don't miss out on the best sleep of your life. Visit rvmattress.com slash rvlifestyle and hurry, because once November's over, so are these incredible deals. Just a quick note, if you're watching this before mid-February, you should know that RV Mattress has a big President's Day sale. And it's a whopping 30% off. And you can, you can check them out, rvmattress.com slash rvlifestyle. And now it's time for the social media buzz with uh, Wendy Boyer. And this is always a fun topic every week as Wendy highlights things that people have been talking about. All right. And uh, so are we ready to get going? We are more than ready to get going. Here's Wendy Boyer, the social media buzz. Hi, everybody. Recently in our RV lifestyle community, we had a post from Christy. Christy wrote she's going to the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta in New Mexico this October, and she was so excited her RV spot just got upgraded to the presidential campground, and she was wondering if anyone had gone before and if they had any tips. But what I loved about this post is Christy's going to this bucket list event for many of us, and she found out there's going to be a whole bunch of other people from the community at there at the same time. Um, there was Roy and Bud and Sue. They had gone before. They're going different campgrounds, though. Uh, Wendy, she's also going different campground. But Terry's going, and she's in the same campground. That was really cool to see. And we had many others, like Barbara, give great suggestions. Barbara gave a lot of background on the um, fiesta about what made it so special and she told everyone to make sure you're on the field for those morning launches and evening glows. She gave them some tips of a good restaurant to check out, food, trucks. It was great. Also in the community we had a post recently from Linda. Now Linda's planning a trip to either North or South Carolina and she's looking for a campground that is close to a town, something where she can ride her electric bike, she wants a full hookup, she'd like woods, and her whole rig is about 34 feet long. So she asked us some suggestions. Um, Dennis was really helpful. He said that they really like to go to Pirate Land Camping Resort at Myrtle Beach. He said the location's great, full hookups, and he was surprised the price was actually a little bit better than the state park nearby. And I loved Randall's post. He said a friend just recommended that he visit Falls Lake State Campground in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, his rig's 45 feet plus he tows a vehicle and he said the park could handle it and he'll report back on how it is as soon as he returns from that trip. So, loved it. And then over in our RV Lifestyle Facebook group, not that long ago we had Jean ask, can we talk alligators? I'm from the Southwest, heading to Florida. I know all about the behaviors of coyotes, of mountain lions, of rattlesnakes, but I'm about to spend a significant amount of time in Florida. So what do I need to know about alligators to keep my dogs safe? 
Specifically, Jean was worried about taking her dog for a walk and then an alligator like coming up and getting her dog, which you hear about occasionally in the news. So this post was great. It, there were more than 600 responses and some really helpful advice. Many native Floridians chimed in. They shared that yes, alligators are quiet and yes, they're fast on land. And they're likely in all the freshwater ponds, lakes, whatever you see, they're probably one there. Uh, but they said the main thing is you just need to be aware of your surroundings. Um, that means keep your pets away from a freshwater pond, for instance. Um, alligators generally don't like people. And the main thing is just don't walk around those lakes or stay away from those high weed or brush areas and just stay aware of your surroundings and you and your dog are going to be fine. So that's it for me this week. I'm Wendy Boyer, and I'll see you either in our RV lifestyle community or our Facebook group. I think that was fun, how people want to help each other. And the simple question of what, where should I stay, what should I do at the Albuquerque balloon fiesta, everybody that jumped in and brought back good memories to them as they thought about when they were there and how they're going to go back again. And didn't that make you really want to go? Yeah, it really did. And it's, it's always been one of the most popular events. And as you could hear in that, it's some must must do bucket list uh, attendance for uh, just about everybody who RVs at one point or another. Hard to get reservations. Yeah, you got to be on top of it like a year in advance. You do. This part of the podcast is brought to you by Mobile Must Have, and that is a website started by RVers for RVers, and they provide mobile lifestyle solutions for the products and the services most needed by RVers. Now, Mobile Must Have has your most must-have RV products. They are the best in the industry, water, filtration, tire pressure, monitor systems, tire inflation, whole RV surge protection, and the best-in-class internet selections. Now, Jennifer and I have been uh, customers of Mobile Must Have for some time. We have their ultimate road warrior internet solution in the RV. And uh, I can't tell you how it has made uh, connections always reliable and allowed us to work seamlessly on the road and do our, uh, our many podcasts and videos and uploads and downloads that we have to do. Uh, we could not be happier uh, with uh, the speed and the... Um, and the reliability that their system gives us. They have a line of the industry's top rated PEP link routers. Uh, that's kind of the gold standard for mobile internet access, uh, as well as antennas and wiring, cable solutions for Starlink satellite, cellular data processes, uh, all the stuff that you need. And you can get 8% off right now, any orders you put, 8% for limited time if you use the code FREEDOM. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash mobile must have. rvlifestyle.com slash mobile must have. And now it's time for the RV interview of the week, and this is a real treat. Actually, it's kind of like a, a reunion for us in a sense, because the, the couple you're about to meet, uh, we interviewed several years ago when they had this unique idea and they built this concept they call it a travel RV. Think tiny home, think RV, think luxury. And they talked about us and we saw some pictures of it. Well, we actually met them in person at the recent Tampa RV show. And uh, we got a first-hand tour of the actual finished product. It's called a Barclay. That's their name, the Barclays. And they named it the Barclay uh, RV. And you'll see it. I don't know how else to describe it other than uh, it's uh, it's just amazing. It's a mobile home, RV home um tiny home all combined and uh, you can take it pretty much anywhere you want now it's a tough interview to show you because we we did a video version of it and of course the video shows everything they're talking about so we tried to narrate and explain it to you but um, as you audio only listeners uh, can go back and watch the video sometime um, on our youtube channel and you'll be able to see the stuff that we're trying to describe but um, this is an amazing thing to see, and uh, I think you're going to enjoy uh, meeting the Barclays. It was five years ago that I did a uh, podcast episode, and I think we called it, is this an RV or is this a tiny home? And it was on a couple that had come up with a really unique way to blend the, you know, the tiny home customization that is available with the lifestyle of travel like an RV. Uh, 
And here we are at the Tampa RV Super Show, and five years later, I find Robert and Julia right here from Barkley uh, RV. This is now the name of their company. Guys! Hey! hey, hey like. This is like way too you. cool to see you guys like this. Likewise! So, take us up to date on what has happened since that interview we did five years ago. Oh you my have gosh. You're on the road with this thing now. Yeah, I mean, we, we, when we, when we met, we were at the time in the backyard of our home in New Jersey. And then uh, we were just about to sell it. We sold it and uh, started getting on the road. And that was four years and 55,000 miles ago. We've been <laughs> crisscrossing the country. And, and what happened was in, you know, people, we, we knew we were unique, we didn't know how unique. And people started to ask us, oh, can you build us one? And we were like, no, 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 we're, this is our, we're traveling now. We're enjoying it. And then I think it just really caught on that, that with the pandemic and everything else. Well, it, it made sense. Step back with me for a minute and let's give yep. everybody a sweeping view of this Absolutely, thing. And then we'll yeah. kind of go inside. And this is, uh, uh, this is just amazing. So here it is. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> what do we call it? We call it a Barclay, I guess, right? It's a Barclay, but it, 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 like from a what it is. We call it a travel home almost. I mean, it, in a sense. Because I think that's it. A new niche. A travel home. Yeah. yeah. Because it isn't a tiny home. It's pretty big. Yeah, yeah. It's made for travel. So, um, since we're doing this for the podcast and some people are just listening in audio and hopefully they'll go look at the video version. How long is that? 34 feet. 34 feet. 34 feet and eight and a half wide and 13 and a half tall. And what do you pull it with? So we, it was designed for a one-ton dually, I make that disclaimer, but we are pulling it with a Volvo uh, tractor. Okay. So a semi-tractor. And uh, the weight of this thing? 25. 25. When it's, when it's fully loaded. Yeah, that's yeah. fully loaded up. All right, so um, it's always hard when you do video and audio, but for those of you who are listening to the audio version of the podcast, uh, the first thing you, you notice is this, uh, this porch, this uh, really composite, uh patio deck material and a yep. porch and then an open area with a bar is obviously screens across it so you have like an open uh, uh kitchen you can see your kitchen in there you can see steps going up to the second level uh audio folks you got to go to the youtube channel and watch it youtube people you're you're seeing this as we talk so this folds up right oh. this well, the actually, door is underneath. Yeah, yeah, so you see the boxes if you, if you, well, so we have boxes underneath for the audio folks. So yeah. the, the, this, the, the five foot section goes behind the wheels in that box, and the eight foot section goes in front of the wheels in another box, and it completely disappeared. Yeah, so it slides in. Yep. Well, let's go up on the patio and inside and take a look at Absolutely. this. Absolutely. First yeah, yeah. of all, you have put this thing really high end stuff in there. It looks yeah. really yeah. sharp. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. We didn't want to compromise on the the appliances and things inside the home, so it's all um, very high quality. Sub Zero will pitch in, but come on in. All right, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead after you, and then I'll I'll kind of come with the camera and bring all of our monster YouTube audience with us. <laughs> so I think the first thing that you notice when you come in clearly this opening, this 13 foot window wall window door wall is really uh, a game changer because as you'll notice and we'll, I'm sure you'll ask where are the slides there are no slides yeah no slides and, no and and anyone who comes in here gets just so surprised how airy light high ceilings it doesn't it doesn't and and for good or bad the slides are probably the most problematic item in an RV that we hear and so not having that complexity and extra weight and other things made this uh, with these window doors open and then we have the screens and so forth so just the the quality of this wooden uh, mantle or bar deck top, yep. or bar top yeah is awesome it's just beautiful thank you it looks almost like an industrial kitchen yeah yeah i mean it, and and uh yeah i mean you probably noticed uh, the wood stove in here which is another and which has an oven on top of it so you know in cold times I and mean, we, we live in this cold four season in the winter minus seven that doesn't bother us at all really yeah it, it, it's now you've been on the road you have taken this where we've been in pretty much well not all 50 yet we, we still we have 
a little bit over the Pacific Northwest and the, the Atlantic Northeast. Uh, yeah. But otherwise, we've been across the country and, and uh, been living in it for four years. And look at the size of this kitchen here. Uh, beautiful. Um, I mean, there's shoots and plenty of room for your Berkeley water filter. And that sits on the counter when we drive. We don't yeah. really. Yeah. We do not take that off. It's not glued down? Nope. No. The only thing that I take down is the plants and I put it over here near the wood burning stove. But other than that, everything stays. Um, just a quick thing you're doing this. I've seen these arrow gardeners. Yes, They're so I nice. You herbs and stuff. Yes, yeah, because yeah. I cook with them. So it's it's really great. I love them. So this kitchen is fabulous. Yeah. It's it's a, um, you know, a, a professional a chef's kitchen because I... I love to cook and entertain and that type of thing. So yeah, it's when we, um, when we moved from the house. You know, we didn't want just because we were on the road. We didn't want to compromise. Yeah. You know why? Why? And and what's you know we, we had, had some discussion with some people that came over the other day and like you know I always wanted a pot filler. Never had one, but I wanted one. And I never had a steam oven, but I always wanted one. And like this is a small space. Why not just put in the best of the best in here? And and. Uh, I mean, we, we'll, we'll talk about it later, but one of the big things that we're hearing a lot of people talking about is the fact that with this, it's like an exit strategy. Because when I'm done, I don't need to sell it. I, it's a mountain cabin, it's a lakefront, it's a, you know, a guest house, it, it's, it's, it's a house. And, yeah. and it appreciates versus depreciates. <laughs> yeah. um, show me some more of the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, the, so, uh, so this is the... Uh, coffee station. Such a nice touch. And uh, the toaster. A nice garage for the coffee yes, and the yes. filter and it slides yeah. out in the way. Yeah, and then this is just my pots and more pans and stuff in here. And then my baking station with my mixer and Vitamix and all of that blender. And then over here, look at here. And then here is a refrigerator. We didn't want the up and down yeah. because it would take up counter space. So it goes all the way. It's, it's very deep. Very deep. Oh very my deep. goodness. Yeah, from there. Yeah. So then. Well, then, then there's only a refrigerator because, because we have two freezer drawers. Oh, look at that. We have two freezers. And then we have a steam oven. A wolf a steam, steam oven. oven. Yeah, yeah, it's. I love this yeah. thing. It, it's. It cooks so well. The, um, you know, microwave, and then we find storage in any little spot. So storage up here. Yeah. Um, the, let me open. Oh yeah. And um, and the, the uh, dishwasher, full size dishwasher. Um, storage. You know, where do you put the paper, paper towels towel. yeah. and aluminum foil and that and then the garbage and recycle and more storage and more storage where do i put my knives and cutting boards right in here with more you know cutlery type stuff and you have, and you have the 12 foot pantry with a little step stool that will get you up there right yeah 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 that's the uh, i love the i love the fan you know the fit is funny that fan Individually, as an item, gets more comments sure. than any <laughs> other item in this whole thing. It's, it's amazing. And then we have the spice Pantry? rack. Yes. And of course, oh. my um, my step ladder. Oh my goodness! So you can get oh yeah, fine. up there. Yeah. Let's go look at this. I see. Yes. Let's start with the washer and dryer. The washer and dryer, which I can't live without. It's a Miele uh, washer and dryer. It it's it's perfect in I 20 love the minutes sink. look at the sink this the, the the sink storage 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 more storage so so this this is so well laid out this is the bathroom yeah and you have the washer and dryer and on top of it a uh, really nice countertop yes really great sink yes so this becomes the bathroom yeah, and it and becomes then, uh, the wash and dryer yeah. and then it becomes also um the the shower which is mother of pearl shower, uh, tile, very light, very durable, cleans beautifully. Um, I just love it. But it's a beautiful and, shower. And it's, you know, from floor to ceiling. This is so nice. It's not just a plastic no, here. No, Look at great. that. That is very And nice. then because we are totally off grid, we decided on a compost toilet, but people can put an Anything incinerator, they want. Yep. a regular, 
you know, and then it just closes with no issues. This is that I don't have, you know. All right, I'm going to go back to the front of the yeah, of this. Oh, I'm missing. Oh, look at that! It seals right door. off like that. For more privacy. This is a door, a sliding door. Yeah. That slides between yeah. all of that. Boy, it's tough. I feel so sorry for those just watching an audio. You're, <laughs> you're getting a sense of it, but yeah. we need you to look at the video to watch it. A wine rack down there. Uh, yeah. Gotta have a wine fridge, yeah. right? So a little wine fridge, and and uh, in here we have in here we have the. Uh, you know, all the, the glasses. I wanted Great. glasses. I wanted real glasses. Great. Yeah, isn't that the truth? You really do. And look at how well you've set that so that they don't uh, shake. It's a, it's a rack that pulls out. Yeah. It yeah. uh, looks like styrofoam that keeps them from Yeah, it just, you know, everything is just, it just goes in here perfectly. So I just, uh, All custom design. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. yeah. That is very beautiful. And then, and then here, this is actually a, um, a working desk. So I can have a stand-up stand desk, desk yes. and I can put my laptop or I have a computer in here as well, but I have HDMI for the thing. Yeah. And then HDMI and then, for the TV, which is right above a little workstation area. Right. And there's all of the connections. And then when if we don't have so that's obviously our kitchen bar hangout area, right? Because yep. the kitchen is the heart of the home. I mean that's how this was all designed. But then if that's closed, say if we're in the middle of winter, right? Then I can do this. I can take this out. He's and actually then, pulling out the, the stand-up desk, lifting it up a little bit, and then from a rack on the wall... Looks like bringing, artwork, but it's not. No, it isn't artwork. It looks like artwork hanging on the wall. <laughs> just like, and then it turned into the table. So now we have a bar tub. Look at that. Double use of almost everything. Yeah, the, that's one thing that we we really strive to try to figure out how to make the most out of every space. Now this... This beautiful opening area in here is obviously great in the in the summer, summer and then in, in the winter the doors completely close. Up. Yes. Yep. And so then in the summer we have bug screens on both sides that close and we are bug free. Yeah. yeah this, I mean if you want to, you can just, I can just pull so these, yeah. this door, basically they just come in and, then, and they close and they then this, the and then this, doors. this is your main door basically. They're and like the, uh, this window comes right up here, but there's nothing in the middle, so that's a very unique. So you have actually, this panoramic view out yeah, here all the time. Yeah. It's always yeah. light, and this is triple pane. Triple so, pane. Triple pane. So I love the way know. these doors they, they accordion together and completely seal this whole area. Yeah. Uh, I, I've got to show you up above here, so let's go take a look uh, at the upper right. living. Oh, there's more. Oh, yeah, there's more. Oh, wait, there's, there's more. always more. There's actually two things in here. I want to show. So TV here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we can stand. Yeah, but then we're gonna go to the lounge and we will see it up there. But if we want to be up there, then He's pushing a button, the TV is moving on like a, a a tractor almost, moving across the floor, raising, and I got a feeling it's gonna turn around right. in a moment. It's and like we, a robotic TV. Sometimes we we stop it here because we can watch it from our bedroom, yeah. which is up there, or when it goes all the way up, it will, as I said. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing. It will spin around. And look at that. Yeah, you can't see uh, very good, but there's just the, the, between the stairs and the TV. There's like maybe that much yeah. room. Yeah. And it's just a perfect turnaround. And look at how it moves. That's the sound bar on the TV. I hope you all can see it. The lighting. And then we have the rear speakers up there. The Sonos ones up there, and and becomes surround sound. This is theater. That's absolutely beautiful. And we can actually. Uh, we can we can say, hey Google, get ready for a movie. It's pretty loud. Here. And Google yeah. dims the lights. And they would. Well, maybe they didn't even hear me. Did they hear it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, all it's this background good. noise, and probably all your listeners now with their Googles at home are yes. yelling at me. I did that. I did something. <laughs> I like that when I, when I want them to pay attention. I always say, "Hey Alexa, what's the temperature?" And everybody around the world goes, like, "I shouldn't have done that." I uh, do that. So let me wander up here and see. Let me see if I can sneak up here and show you this living room. This is uh, really nice. It goes to the robotic TV. I absolutely love that. Uh, what kind of wood is this on the ceiling? So this is uh, this is tongue groove pine, and and uh, all the walls are shiplap. 
So Joanna Gaines, you know, special, yeah. Oh, yeah. special uh, yeah. shout out. Yeah, and you have a U-shaped sofa. Yeah, so this is a, and this is all you know, obviously storage underneath. These these here are full length his and hers closets back here. So yep. you know, as you know, when you travel, there's also this we use a lot for winter clothes in the summer or summer clothes in the winter, right? They go underneath there. Um, but then this table will well, it can lower an upper, but it folds out. And then we have two leaves that we had stored that goes on the side, so this can sit up to eight people because we put it we put a bench here. Put a bench. And then and then this lowers down, sitting on this ledge, to make a queen bed. Beautiful for you to have guests. So yeah. we have guests or our family and so forth. And of course, we use a mini split. Yeah, right here, heat yeah. and air conditioning, right there. And and uh, that's only a nine K actually. Yeah, amazingly enough. Does it do a good job? I mean, yeah. Uh, you can't show the insulation, but I, I know you've really insulated these. It, this is a two by four steel framing construction, and uh, with closed cell foam insulation throughout. Like I mentioned, all the windows are double pane windows, residential windows. These are Anderson 400 series. Beautiful. But um, and you know, it's and it's basically it's a home built for hurricanes and earthquakes. So these are we have hurricane straps. We have threaded rods from the top plate all the way down to the to the uh chassis i gotta show my favorite part yeah right up here look at this folks so this is uh open <laughs> okay so i gotta do that and show everybody you heard the bump okay so i'm not paying attention to what i'm doing see that so i walked up and I, let me show you <laughs> so now i know that's there yeah, okay oh, yeah. so yeah, right here so up here is a deck look at that can you see that i mean this is deck. Solar panels at that end. Solar panels here. So you're always charging. And then you've got this really cool area with two chairs to sit up. Uh, there's the vent from the from the wood stove. And here we are up above the Tampa RV Super Show where we happen to have met. But isn't that a great thing? To have your own uh, upper deck to get some sun. Just Awesome. Yeah, now watch your head on that on the way down there. Yeah. That is really nice up there. It is. Uh, we, we use that. That's my favorite breakfast spot. I say, are, say it again. Yeah, that's my favorite breakfast spot up there. And, and also do a lot of harvest toast. Right? I know you guys like harvest toast. And, and sitting in the winery, you know, with your wine looking over, it, it's nice. So tell me about the... Um, how about the solar up there? How much solar do you have? In so this is 1800 watts. So, the, so when we built this originally, it was really 300 watts was like, that was a huge panel. So this has six 300 watt panels on it. And your batteries? And we, I mean, I'll show you the batteries, but I have uh, just about 21 kilowatts of lithium. So how long off the grid can you do this? Run your mini split for heat we, and air? And we, I mean, in the, from March to October, we don't need to hook up. You don't? No, really? we don't. And and uh, with no issues. And the, the mini split AC is so efficient. And and the insulation is so efficient. So we also cool it out. Unless we have all the doors open and it's 120. Yeah, okay, we're going to use more electricity. But um, it's it's super efficient in here. And in the wintertime, because we spend winter in the mountains. So we, we spent probably four to five months in Heber City right by Deer Valley there in the in the Mountain Valley RV Resort and uh, there we do have to hook up because the sun you know it goes up right. over and down so uh, we, we did not look at the bedroom up there and let's take yeah, it it's yeah, kind yeah, of like yeah, a yeah. bedroom loft I can also show you the, the uh, because the electrical is different yeah I'll that. come back to that in a minute. okay yeah well I'll just edit that it's yeah, quite no all right so I'm just gonna jump up and show the bedroom so the bedroom is a loft and yeah, here, here is uh, some some neat little little steps, and uh, and there you go with the bedroom. How many batteries do you have again? So we have four batteries, four 5.4 kilowatt batteries, and we run a 48 volt system, so that we actually we're not 12 volt at all. We have a I have a regular traditional 220 home panel. So this is basically. As much power as you have coming into a home. Yeah. Yeah. Where yeah. do you keep the batteries on this? That's, so yeah. that was sort of a challenge because we want we wanted easy accessibility. We wanted them also to be 
heated, if you will, warm, right? Because the lithium and you don't want to be yeah. cold, we're going to be outside. So as we were looking at our design, we, 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 we sort of felt a lot of people, especially in the tiny homes, another thing, they did things in the stairway for storage and boxes. And we said, that's a perfect spot. So with Julia's help and her design, we were able to, <laughs> I'm able to pull this completely out. This is too cool. <laughs> yeah. And, and here I have complete access to my entire electrical system. Same as Tesla. Same yep. thing. Yeah, Tesla. I mean, they are. They obviously, you know, I have to make those things, but yeah. they, they, uh, that, that basically is a 48 volt system driving a 5,000 watt inverter that that feeds a regular traditional 220 panel. Amazing. So when we hook up from the outside, we can, yeah, we can be 50 amp, we can be 40, 30, whatever, 20. I can go into a 15 amp home outlet and just and actually set my system to go down to seven amps because I'm sharing it with other people and everything can run in this house because it runs off the battery and all I use that for is trickle charging it my goodness my goodness all right uh, I where's Julia where's oh, Julia she, oh she's Julia's, Julia's out there talking to the crowd yeah yeah um, so I have to ask uh, you've done this now Yep. For 50,000 plus miles. Yep. Um, now you are going to custom build these for others. Yeah, it, you know, it was, it was, I think, always our wish and hope to, to inspire others to think differently. And, and that, and now we're going to start uh, building them here this year. Tell folks how they can find out, follow yeah, so you, we have find a, out about if, they, if they're interested in something like this. Absolutely, we're on, we're on Facebook, we're on, on Instagram, we have our website. Send and us their website. BarclayRV.com. So, and, and the uh, Instagram is BarclayRV and the Facebook is BarclayRV. So we, we, uh, and we have a newsletter that we have to send out to people and, and love to, if you're interested, we love to work with them. Fully customizable, and we should tell them. Let's tell them the cost. Wait, yeah. uh, before we do the cost, right over there is a seven hundred thousand dollar RV. <laughs> They're right next to some of the Allegro buses. Uh, how much do and, these? And, and so, so here's the interesting thing, right? So there, you have a bus. Yeah. Uh, and that seven hundred is, I mean, it's as you know, almost the lower end of the coach. I mean, there are some ones that are much more than that, yeah. right? And here, this here. Uh, we'll start at 350. 350. And then yes, yeah, so then you need a tow vehicle. But honestly, if if you can, we we you can design it for smaller vehicles. This, you don't need to have vehicles a or whatever. Or you don't need a tractor. But from if, if you if you're really looking at the financials aspect of it, buying a tractor for the same or less than your big dually, driving it for a hundred thousand miles you're likely to be able to sell that for what you paid or more when you're done. And this doesn't depreciate like a regular RV because here it's, it's an asset and now you can put it on your property. Uh, again, for those of you who've uh, followed the audio podcast, uh, I, I hope you got a, a sense of this, but uh, when you get a chance, go look at the videos and uh, you'll see uh, it all on the video as well. well Mike, Robert, I wish coming. you the best of uh, luck here. Well, thank you. you. So check him out on his website. Thank you guys for watching and uh, thank you guys for oh. inviting us into your travel home. Thank you so much. That was fun. That was different. That's unique. And a lot of people, not, well, I, I, a lot of people spend that much money on or just more. or more on a class B or a B plus. Yeah, we've so, seen class B's that cost that much. Right. So this is an interesting concept. So my favorite thing was um, was one that wood burning stove that was awesome, but then that sky deck where you could actually climb up those stairs and, and sit on your deck. Uh, I can just see that someplace out west, you know, with the big vista in front of you. Oh yeah. But anyway, yeah, uh, check it out. And again, you audio only listeners, see if you can get to the, the YouTube version, and you'll get a you'll appreciate it even more. All right, when we come back, we've got lots of RV news coming up. Stay with us. This is the time of year when a lot of people start shopping for their next RV, checking out all of the 2024s online, going to shows. Keystone RV made it easy this year by putting together a guide of their favorite new models and features from all of their fifth wheel brands, Montana, Cougar, Alpine, Arcadia, and Sprinter. Each brand has different floor plans and styling, features, price points, 
all backed by Keystone's history of innovation, quality, and owner support. The guide is free, and you can get it at KeystoneRV.com. One of the models that was just added to the buying guide is the Montana 3623EB. Besides unparalleled fifth wheel luxury and comfort, this model has an all new e-bike stow and go storage design. The biggest challenge for RV owners is keeping those bikes safe and charged. Montana designed the strut assisted bike rack system that lets you easily load and store your bikes inside of your coach even has a power supply to keep them charged. Learn more and get your free guide at KeystoneRV.com. There is a new development coming on the market for RVers in Tennessee. It's built by the same company we bought our land from. We just went to look at it and it is amazing. Mountaintop property, great views, big woods and trails close to the Buffalo River, like our property, gorgeous countryside. It's only a few minutes from the Natchez Trace Parkway and an easy drive to Nashville. These are big properties, five acres and up, and the prices are great. There's even financing. We are really happy with our property. These guys do a great job. It's hard to find acreage where you can have an RV full time, especially in popular destination spots. This is your property, your way. There's electric and high-speed fiber optic internet. No more crowded parks or reservations. You can stay as long as you want. Go to rvlands.net. That's rvlands.net. Welcome back, and now it's time for the RV News of the Week. Well, bad news to start off with. The U.S. Forest Service is working on a new temporary camping and campfire ban on a, a very popular boondocking spot along California's Highway 1, just north of San Simeon. This remote section of the San Carpoforo Creek Beach is uh, in the Los Padres National Forest Monterey District. And they're shutting it down because it's been overused. And that means it has been filled up with human waste and trash and campfires along with prolonged stays from homeless individuals. All of that's damaging the very delicate environment. And so they're going to just shut it down. Uh, it's just become too popular. It needs to be closed, they say, for about two years to give the environment a chance to heal. We are hearing about this kind of thing more and more about boondocking spots. Uh, some of it blamed on homeless communities that sort of just set up there, uh, and others blamed on, uh, on inconsiderate campers. This one, which is on a, just a gorgeous stretch of remote scenic Highway 1, uh, is home to some protected, uh, Birds, uh, elephant seals, bald eagles, and other wildlife, and they, they, the government says they're all at risk because this excessive use is damaging the, the environment. So they're right, um, and we should point out that there are right and there are wrong ways to boondock. So uh, we wrote a book about it, and it's uh, our beginner's guide to boondocking. We will put a link in the description below, but if you've not done boondocking, please know there there are some general accepted practices that we should all promise uh, to uh, to adhere to. So, sorry to see that happen. Yeah, very sad. But the next story is a fun story. We saw this story out of Las Vegas last week about a rush on RV parks as uh, football fans look for ways to head to town last minute for the Super Bowl. Fans from San Francisco and Kansas City were waiting to see if their teams made it. And when they did, they decided to drive their RVs to town and stay at uh, RV parks. So most RV parks are now full, with many keeping a waiting list. But uh, with the price of hotel rooms skyrocketing, Super Bowl weekend, why not take your RV? The Super Bowl will be this Sunday, February 11th. Yeah, uh, the day before your birthday. Yes, my birthday. I share it with Abraham Lincoln and a lot of other people. <laughs> hey, speaking of football, did you see the story about Jim Harbaugh, the famous uh, University of Michigan football coach uh, who recently quit to take a new job uh, as the head coach of the, San, San, uh, of the Los Angeles Chargers? And uh, it was interesting. He did his introductory press conference the other day and uh, they asked him, you know, we're going to move and buy a home and all that stuff. And 
he kind of confessed, he was a little reluctant to share it at first, but he says that what he really wants to do is drive his RV with his wife out to California and camp in it for a few months to be next uh, to the Chargers training facility. Uh, wouldn't that be cool, going to a campground and Jim Harborough is your neighbor? <laughs> Come on over, Jim. What a great com campfire conversation that could be with him. But here's what he said. He said, I want to drive my RV out and go to a trailer park down by the water or Disneyland. And the two that I've researched are close to that training facility. He says, I want to Jim Rockford it for the next couple of months until we move into the new facility. There's a little test. You know, Jim Rockford is... Uh, Probably some of our younger listeners may not remember. There was a big popular series called The Rockford Files, and the lead a detective character in that lived in a kind of a trailer out by the Pacific Ocean. So that'd be fun. Good luck, Jim. Hope you get your RV out there. Uh, that is a fun story. Now we've got an, another story that I think is rather exciting. Yellowstone National Park is considering installing a new permanent entrance to the north part of the park to replace a temporary one that's been there since uh, 2022 when there was flooding. And the road would provide year-round access to the park and would be between Gardner Cook City and Silvergate and the National Park Service is taking public comment on making a decision later this year. So a new entrance that would be open year round. I'm voting for it. Yeah, I am too. It's, um, I'm amazed that they were able to build that temporary entrance after those floods. Those floods yeah. were just devastating and they quickly got that open. So a new permanent one. Good luck. I think hope everybody wants that. All right. That's the news of the week. Uh, we've got uh, a couple of questions that came in uh, and we're going to take those up with everybody right after this. When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborne batteries. Battleborne batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And Battleborne batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have, and they'll probably be the same on your rig too. Battleborne battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborne batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. Now it's time for the questions of the week. And our first question is, I remember hearing you once say that we should clean the filter on our RV pump at least once a year. You said it was very easy, but I don't remember your instructions. Can you repeat for me? And this was from James. All right, uh, James, to, to, it is very easy to do. It's something even I can do. So to clean the water pump strainer, uh, and you do want to do that, a good time to do it is right now or before you start using it for the season. You'll be amazed everything that's in that thing. Uh, first, um, make sure it's off. You know, turn off the pump and then open a faucet in your RV and let the water kind of the, the lose all the water pressure. Uh, then you can go in and you might want to put a little rag underneath it or whatever it is and just easily disconnect the water line from um, from the strainer from from the pump uh, it, where it goes into the strainer there you'll see there's a little usually it's just a little wing nut that you can usually do you know unscrew it by your hand um, and on most water pumps you just kind of grasp the front section of the strainer and uh, you just uh, kind of twist it counterclockwise it will separate from um, from, from the section of the strainer that's screwed into the pump. You don't have to take that part. Just kind of take this little basket out. And then you'll see there's all sorts of junk in there. Just, you know, knock it off, you know, clean it out, put it back in. Um, and, uh, you should be good to go. Well. Just reverse the, the whole procedures. Uh, and then, you know, obviously you want to make sure there's water in your fresh water tank. And then you can turn the pump on, turn on the faucet. And uh, it'll pressurize it. Make sure nothing's leaking where you unscrewed the water. You know where you unscrewed the water going into the the strainer, and then you're good for usually another year. So that's how easy it is to do. 
Awesome. Now, question number two. Is it possible to use Alexa in the 2022 Silverado 2500 truck we used to tow the trailer? And this is from Glenn. Yeah, yes, it is. And um, in fact, in your case, Glenn, Silverado has Alexa built right into it. In fact, most trucks that have been built within the last few years uh, do have Alexa on the go already installed as part of your entertainment system. Not all, but, but most of them do. And there's a special site that people should check. It's amazon.com slash Alexa dash automotive. We'll put a link in the description below, but amazon.com slash Alexa and then a dash automotive. Uh, go there. Type in your vehicle details and it will tell you whether you already have Alexa built in. And uh, then you just follow the registration steps that it lists for you. If you don't have it, you might have to download an app. They'll explain what you have to do. Um, and uh, it, the site has great instructions. So, yes, you can take Alexa and you can use it, you know, to say, like, you know, uh, um, set the temperature to whatever it is that you want in the vehicle and uh, all of the functions. You can say, you know, drive home. It'll take you on the NAV system. And it's uh, it's great. So it's probably already installed on most of them. And in the case of uh, Glenn, who wrote the question, you already got it on your Silverado. All right, those are our questions. And we love getting your questions. We love getting your comments. We are Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. That's it for this episode. And again, you can watch it on the YouTube version or listen on your favorite podcast app. Make sure you've subscribed to the podcast and tell somebody else about it. Thanks for watching. Happy trails. 